Statistics and Excel. Mean and Outliers. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, and looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer, key, practice, tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get right to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab, just having our data set in it so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's take a look at the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going. We're gonna have our salary data on the left-hand side. We'll do some calculations for it, including the mean, create our histogram, and then we'll think about what if we add one more line item to that salary data, that being an outlier, possibly the CEO's salary, and what would be the impact on the mean and something like a histogram with that outlier in play. So let's go on to the blank tab. Now, if you want to have practice data sets to work with, we suggest taking a look at Kaggle.com, K-A-G-G-L-E.com. You can also create the data set or simply type in a data set uh, if you so choose. It's not too long of a data set we're working with here. Let's do our normal formatting as we do every time. I'm gonna select the entire worksheet or pretty much every time. And then I'm gonna right click on it and we'll format the cells. This is my baseline underlined formatting. We're gonna then go to the numbers tab on the left, currency, and then I want to make negative numbers be bracketed and red. I don't need any dollar signs. And right now no decimals are needed. So I'm gonna remove the decimals and add them as needed. And then okay, I'm gonna make the whole thing bold by going to the home tab font group and the whole thing is bold. That's how I work. I'm all bold all the time. That's how it is, man. Anyways, not really, but still. Uh, we're gonna then, uh, <laughs> We're gonna then insert, let's put our our tab here and we'll go to the insert and make a table out of it, tables. And uh, let's put a table in around our data. So I'll go ahead and insert our table. Let's pull that over here so we can see it. Dancing ants look to be in the proper locations. I've added up top the formulas we created in a prior presentation, so we will not recreate them, but if you want to be able to type in the formula, remember you can go to the insert tab, symbols, group, equation, and then within the equation, I recommend using the ink equation, helping you to basically create what you're writing into the format in Excel, which is quite nice. Okay, now the data on the left represents salary data we're imagining for a corporation, for example. So let's do some of our normal statistical calculations. Before we do, I wanna make a skinny B column because I don't wanna put anything right next to the table. So I'm gonna put my cursor between column B and C, left click and make a skinny B, skinny B. All right, and then let's type in here that we're gonna have the average or mean, let's say mean or average mean or av or average average and this is going to be created from excel and i'm going to make the column c a little bit larger i don't think i need the colon here and then i'm going to do the formula equals the average 
and then double click on the average as we've seen in the past. I'm gonna select the data because it's in a table. I can just use the down arrow so the dancing ants are now around the entire data set. They're doing their mamba around and working their magic, their, their voodoo magic that somehow creates a formula when they dance. They can make rain too, I hear. Probably not, but still. Median, median calculation equals the median and double click on that. That's the one where we, if we ordered the data from top to bottom, we would pick the one in the middle. So I'm gonna select the whole data and then say there's the median. So if I was to order it in order, then that would be the one where we pick the one in the middle. And then we have our max. Let's do the max calculation equals the max. This is gonna be the largest number. So I'm gonna select the max, select our data and enter, and then the min calculation equals the min. It's gonna be the smallest number. These are quite useful formulas. Select the entire things or functions. You also might have quartile one, right? Q1 that we can put in place equals quartile one, which is kind of like the median, but for the first quartile, right? I would select the entire range and I have to add then comma one. I'm doing this fairly quickly because we've seen them in the past. And then Q2, or not Q2, Q3, because the, uh, the median is Q2. Q3 equals quartile, double click the quartile, the entire set of data, comma, and this is gonna be three for quartile three. So there's our data set. Now let's recalculate the average. And this is what I mean by basically converting something that's in a, in a, a formula standpoint, instead of doing the algebra on it uh, and doing it by hand, and instead of going th to the other extreme of just using a function or a formula in Excel, we can kind of make a little table for it, right? We can create a little formula which is useful to, for us to see the steps that are being taken uh, in, in, in Excel. So we can say, let's do the average or mean calculation, and this will be the manual calculation. Now, this is you can think of this kind of like making up a tax return or something, right? You're doing, you're showing your work in like, uh, like a tax return format, right? Where you can see the formulas line by line. So in any way, so we can say we're gonna we're gonna if I if I look at this this format, what I need to do is sum up all of uh, the x's, right? So this formula means x bar, the mean or the average of x1, x2, x3. These all represent x, right? For the number of x's that are here, so x1, x2, x3, uh, and so on. And then we're gonna sum all that up and divide it by n. Same thing here, the sum represents the same thing as the numerator up top. We're summing all the x's where x starts at i, and then it goes to n, i equals one to n divided by the number uh, of n. So we can, we can tap that down here and I can say, well, let's calculate uh, the numerator, which is basically the sum values of, we could say x's, the x's, equals, let's use our trusty sum function this time, summing up and everything in here. So we'll sum it up all these items, which represent x1, x2, x3 onto xn for however many x's are there. And then we're gonna say that we want to the divide, divide by number of values, which is we're representing as n. In our, in our formula, right? So we're gonna divide by the number of values to get that, I'll use the count function, equals count brackets. And we're simply gonna select our data set, which will count all of the items. That's the number of items, there's 51 of them, and that will give us our average or mean. And then I'm gonna say this equals up two to the sum of the data divided by up one for the 51. There it is, so we get we get uh, the same calculation here and here. Let's put an underline, home tab, font group, underline. Now, if you're making a table, oftentimes I might make the top like a header, right? Home tab, font group, brackets. Let's make this black and then the font white. You might indent 
some of the internal sides, right? So the useful little indent thing, home tab, alignment, indent. So because it has a colon, this is a sub calculation within it. And then down here, the total, I might double indent, home tab, alignment, double indent. So I might make this a little bit wider. So there we have it. Let's put some blue around this because that's my normal data input color, home tab, font group, drop down bucket. If you don't have that blue, it's under the more colors, standard and then blue. So we'll say, okay, I'm gonna put borders, font group, drop down borders. So there we have it. I'll do the same thing here with our data here, home tab, font group, blue and border. Okay, so there's our normal stats and we thought about our formula in a table format uh, a little bit more rigorously. Now let's, let's go and make our histogram. So I'm gonna select the entire data set and I'm gonna go into the insert tab and go into the charts and histogram and let's make a histogram of it. I'll delete the title because we could see the data set and it looks something like that. So there's our histogram. So that looks good. We can, of course, change the number of buckets on the left if we want. Let's, let's play with that a little. If I hit the buckets on the left, let's make it, it's on automatic. I'm on this symbol. I can say the, the let's say the number of bins, let's say we want like 11 bins. So then I have something that looks like this. And so we've got more data on the left and then we've got a couple data sets on on the right. So there's kind of our our mapping of the data. It's it's not really populating as like a bell-shaped curve, right? It's it's tailing off to the right, you know, kind of shape of the data. All right. Well, let let's just take this what we want to do now is just think about well what if there was an outlier to the data, right? So now we're going to add an outlier. So let's take this entire thing and I'm going to I'm going to copy it to the right. So I'm going to take this entire starting point and because everything is relative to each other, I could, sorry about that. I think I swallowed a fly. The fly was so sick of hearing me talk. It took a, it took a kamikaze death charge down my throat and tried to stop me from talking. Any case, we're going to, let's copy the whole thing. So I'm going to go from uh, column A, I'll select the whole column and then I'm going to go on over and we can go all the way to, let's say column L, control C or copy, right click and copy if you so choose. And then I'm gonna put it in column N. So in column N, right click, and I'm just gonna paste it normal. So now it pasted the whole thing, just uh, normal, right? So now I, I'm gonna make a, a, a skinny column M. Now I wanna make sure that everything is populating the way it should. So in other words, like this, this is now pulling from my new data set. It's not pulling from the old table over here. That's what we want to have happen. Uh, so that one looks good. They all look like they're pulling from my new data set, which is the same numbers, but a different table, which I'm now going to modify. So that looks good. Now that, let's check the chart. The chart is pulling from the old data set. So it's pulling from this table. So I want to change my histogram to pull from the new data set, this data set. So I can select the, the chart. One way I could do that is going to go to the chart tools up top and then the data that's being selected i'm going to go into that and so it, there's the dancing ants doing their mamba around uh the data but it moved it jumped over here i'm going to move it back and i want to take that series of data and edit it and then say you need to change where you do your mamba ants see it starts to go over there again that's not where you want to go i want you to dance around these ones dance around those ones and so we'll say okay and then okay, and then okay. So now we've got our dancing ants. Uh, we've got the, the, the correct data set. Okay, so now we're just gonna add one more piece of data. These are all the data sets, but now you've got the CEO the, the, that's, that's uh, he makes $1 million. Let's just bring it up to 1 million. And you can imagine what's gonna happen. That's 100,000, no, no, 1 million, 1 million. Okay, so now we got to see if our data set's picking up the right data. So if I select all my data, is it going all the way down? It is because I made a table out of it. So that one, it looks like it's picking up the entire table. The maximum looks correct. 
notice our average has now jumped up to 89,354 versus the 71,498. Uh, so, so we have a pretty significant impact on the average from uh, that, that, that new data set. So if I sum everything up here, picks up the million here as well. And then, so here's our new average calculation. Let's take a look at the table. I don't think the table's picking up the new data set. If I scroll down, it's not picking up that million. So now let's change the table and say, let's change this. One easiest way to do it is I just click on it here and then it shows me the, the data and I could just drag that box down to pick up the million. And so there it is. So now I've got a really kind of messed up histogram because the million is this big outlier and it's trying to pick up a number of boxes that will take into consideration that, that uh, $1 amount that's way, way out. So it looks like everything else is in this one box over here. Now, if I try to make my boxes, let's, let's make this as wide as possible. And then I'll try to make my boxes so that it, it, it can pick up more of this stuff. Let's make it like this. And that's what I'm, and I'll scroll it in a little bit. All right, now let's, let's, let's make it, I'm going to go to my, my numbers and then here axis and then i'm going to make the number of bins go way up to like 450 bins right so now you can see now you can see what it's doing here it's got this one line item way over here and everything else is kind of packed on the left hand side let's do like 400 400 bins 400 so then right you got that one line item over there what if i did like 350 350 bins. Let's do, uh, we'll keep it. Let's, let's do the 400 again. Anyways, so, so that's, so, so that's our, so that's obviously a, a problem in that the outliers can have a huge impact on some of our statistical tools. So when I'm, when I'm using this histogram, if I was to remove the outlier or Another thing I can do is try to say that anything over a certain amount, then I'm going to say the overflow is anything over like 90,000, was it? So now if I bring my bin size back down to automatic, then, uh, then it's only got two bins. <laughs> That's automatic. Let's bring it, let's bring it back up to like 10 bins. So now you've got something that looks more reasonable, but this, but this outlier is pulling, pulling everything to that outlier, right? So just to demonstrate that I'm going to remove that. And, and we're going to say that we now have uh, the bins like 450 bins, right? just so we could see the impact of the outlier. All right, so there it is. So now now again, the, 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 so so some of the issues that we have here are that the 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 average is going to be impacted by that outlier, and that outlier could even be larger, right? Like, what if this was like, you know, nine million? You know, then we have the the average jumping up to two hundred and forty three thousand, and versus the seventy one. Now, notice if I take the median. Then the median is still is still looking relatively good because it's the one in the middle. So that one outlier isn't impacting the median. So this is kind of the the let's bring this back to a million. So our histogram is back. So so this is the kind of what we have to think about which number is most representative for what we are doing. And again, this is some another place where people will often play when they're trying to be kind of deceptive with numbers, right? So you've got to, you got to say, well, are they are they using the mean or are they using the average, and which would be appropriate to use uh, in the, in this case? So if you're looking at if you're looking at like the average height of people and you have a bell shaped distribution of the data, then the mean is often quite useful uh, is a, is a good kind of summary number to use. If, for example, however, 
that you have salary data and you have something like this where the CEO is way outside uh, the normal and someone's trying to argue for an increase in their salary or the unions or something are trying to in trying to say that we need an increase in the salary because we're below the average salary. Well, that might be a little bit distorted because because the average salary is taken into consideration these huge outliers that are out that are out there, right? So you might you know you might say, well, maybe the outlier people should make less instead of everyone else making more, you know, <laughs> unless 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 you have the money to you know it's hard to or or if you taking home prices, for example, and when you take the home prices, you have you might have a, a big mansion that's in the neighborhood that might be worth millions of dollars, whereas the other homes are somewhere around the 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 average of the area, which like say is a hundred thousand dollars or something. Well then you you have to you would think that the the median, the middle number, the average or the the middle number in the data set would be more appropriate than the mean, because the mean's gonna be skewed by that big outlier or you could say well why don't i take this set of numbers and remove the big outlier take out the ceo salary and then that that middle number uh the the mean number the average will make more sense for normal for the normal people like if i'm gonna if i'm trying to get a new job uh somewhere out of out of college or something like that then for me to take the the average uh, of the of the company salary, which takes into consideration the the high uh, CEO salaries, then that's not going to probably be representative of what I might be making in that organization. Whereas the median might be a lot more representative of what I might ma make in the organization. Or if I was to take out the outliers and look at the average salary without the outliers. So again, these are. When we look at these differences, this is a, another area where people start to say, well, statistics is just another way to lie with numbers, right? But it's not, but, but when people are deceiving with the numbers, they're, 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 what they're doing is just like what they do with words. They're choosing intentionally oftentimes the wrong representation that has some truth to it, but which is misleading either through omission of the proper data to get the proper perspective or you know or just you know mis misinterpreting the data that has been given so so there's that